Hi everyone, uh, Patek here. Today's video will be an impulsive book review because I really have to talk about this book. Uh, this book is still four months away from being published. Yeah, it's still a long time, I know. But I simply have to get this out of my chest right now while my memories and my feelings on this book are still fresh. This is a book review for a coming-of-age fantasy novel called The Hand of the Sun King by J.T. Greathouse. This one was amazing. I think I have just found my favorite debut of the year. It's even better than The Black Tongue Thief by Christopher Buellman, which I just finished a few days ago. It, it was really good. And it's also better than The Helm of Midnight by Marina Lostader and better than She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parkinson. All three are books that I absolutely love within this year. And this is super high praise. Yes, this is a very high praise. But this one just clicked with me. I love every moment of reading this book. How did I find out about this book? Well, as usual, it's the cover art that got my attention. Look at it, it's so pretty. If you know me by now, I love taking chances on an unknown debut or unknown book with a gorgeous cover art, and most of the time it worked, and this time it worked again. The Hand of the Sun King is the first book in the Pact and Pattern trilogy by J.T. Greathouse. The story revolves around when Alder, or Foolish Kerr, a boy torn between two legacies. One of his father whose legacies can be traced back to the right hand of the Emperor, one of his mother who reject the Empire. However, there may exist a better path, a magical path filled with secrets. By attaining this path, freedom from the shackle of legacies can be achieved, and Alder wants it. To do that, he has to take the Imperial Examinations, the first step to becoming the Hand of the Emperor, and wield the Empire's magic. The Hand of the Sun King is a coming-of-age fantasy with the magic and calligraphy school trope and beyond in an Asian-inspired world-building setting. Now, I am no stranger to voicing how much I love these tropes done well, and Great House did an exceptional job on executing these tropes on his debut. The themes of friendship, apprenticeship, freedom, and the determination to choose our own path, to not have someone else decide our fates, were dominant in the days of companionship and learning that Alder undertook. The character development of Wen Alder, again the main character, was so outstanding. He wasn't a thoroughly flawless or kind-hearted character. He was arrogant as a boy and he made a lot of mistakes despite his natural talents with magic and affinities with other aspects. But honestly speaking, I totally enjoyed reading the gradual development in his characterizations and stories. There is something that felt genuine and compelling about Alder's thirst for knowledge and magic, and Alder continuously learned the hard way that He's not as good as he think he is. I felt that this totally built his characters wonderfully and I love a well-written character. And furthermore, the relationship that he built with uh, the other supporting characters like his grandmother, Koroha, Oriole, Asher, and Atar truly shaped his characterizations. The Hand of the Sun King was not epic in scope per se, but it is very expensive, it's vivid, and it's immersive. Because we readers get to learn more about the world and the cultures together with Alder as the story progress. As I said earlier, this is a coming of age fantasy and the feeling of loneliness in the isolation of adulthood that uh, Great House implemented into the book felt so palpable. But it's not all bleakness, it's not all despair. There is hope, there is love, there is friendship, and there is quite a lot of things to learn here because this is quite a philosophical book. There's a lot of thought-provoking passages and the book reminds us to always treasure the people we love while we are still able to do it. We all have our own shackles and difficulties in life and it's important, it's very important to remember that we are not completely alone. Sometimes even kindness from stranger can be the light in the darkness. But everything about this book, to me, felt executed efficiently and effectively. The topic of politics, economy, and the difficulty of cooperation between uh, people of different social status and cultures were handled with such finesse. It's really good. Loyalty, war, leadership were some of the other pivotal themes of the novel. The conjuration of the elemental magic and how the pattern of the world affects it was so brilliant and atmospheric. Yes, if you love reading about ancient mysterious gods and elemental magic in your high fantasy books, you are in luck here. There are veering the power to transform into beasts, there is wind collar, there is fire collar, there is lightning spears, and more. But it's not all brutal destructions and ruin. Without giving any spoiler away, there were some truly gorgeous scenes involving the combination of wind and fire that I found to be so mesmerizing. The conflicts surrounding the canon of sorcery were captivating, and the devastation that lie in the path of its awakening enhanced the tension-packed battles. 
I'm not saying that The Hand of the Sun King is a heavily action-packed novel, that's really not the case, but each battle scene in this book was brimming with intensity and it's good to witness and be reminded that magic can also be used for good purposes. Plus, Aldo's obsession and fascination with magic continue to strengthen the core strength of the storytelling. Uh, lastly, I cannot praise Great House Bruce highly enough. I love his writing so much. The first person point of view of Alder was magnificent and the pacing has a consistently addictive quality to it. But more importantly, Great House Beautiful Prose was utterly engaging. It's such an exquisitely written book. The prose was accessible, but it never felt too simplistic, and the world building felt intricately designed. The writing is elegant, lush, philosophical, and compulsive. Great House left an echo of beauty with each word stamped with his brush of ink. I guess this shouldn't come as a surprise. The Hand of the Sun King is one of the very few high fantasy novels with a story that actually prioritizes handwriting and calligraphies in the narrative. I certainly haven't read many books that put such a clear emphasis on the advantage of being ambidextrous. I have highlighted a myriad of passages and I wish I can share them with you all, but that's not possible because this review will become a collection of quotes. From my previous videos, you should already kinda know that. My reading journey this year hasn't been very satisfactory except for a few standouts, and The Hand of the Sun King uh, arrived out of nowhere like a divine intervention. It was amazing, this is hands down my favorite debut of the year. I'm sure this will be the debut of the year for me. This is the fourth book I read this year that received a full 5 out of 5 stars rating, which means that I absolutely loved it. My sleeping hours were happily sacrificed, and each waking moment I'm not reading this book, I was looking forward to diving back in. That's how compelling it was to me, that's how captivating it was. The Hand of the Sun King deserves a mark of excellence. I loved it so much, what a fantastic debut. It has terrific characterizations, it has an immersive world building, it's a spectacular debut, and the prose totally swept me away. Actually, this is not just the best debut for this year, it is one of the best debut that I've ever read. It is just that good. I absolutely love this, and I highly recommend this to those who love coming-of-age fantasy with a magic school trope. Again, I know that this is still 4 months away from being published, it's still a long time, but I just have to review this book now, and if you think this book sounds intriguing to you, and uh, you have the means to do it right now, I think you should uh, pre-order this book as soon as you can, it's worth it. And I think the price isn't too expensive right now on Book Depository, I'm not sure, but uh, The Broken Binding, an indie bookstore that I've been cooperating for a while now, is having a pre-order for this book signed. So yeah, you should check that out. Well, that's all from me today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know whether this book uh, interests you or not, because this one was amazing. What a pleasant surprise. I totally love this one, and I cannot wait for you to read this book. As always, thank you so much for watching, and thank you for your support. Bye-bye.